G'day, Raf here from PropMaker. Some of you might know that I've actually got a true love of playing pinball machines. Some of you also know that I love restoring things. This, in fact, is a pinball machine that I restored late last year. It's called Jungle Lord. It was from 1981, a Williams pinball machine. There's still a few things to do with it, but that's another set of videos. This set of videos is all about turning something that looks like a pile of junk into something that looks like this. We're going to restore a 1979 Time Warp machine from, from Williams. Welcome to PropMaker. So, what are we going to do in this video? This is part one of our restoration of Time Warp. This machine behind me is actually Jungle Lord. It was one of only 6,000 made, um, and those 6,000 were distributed all over the planet. Um, so, and it didn't really have the uptake that Time Warp had. Time Warp is one of 8,875 machines that went out there, but they were, it became a very popular game. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that that makes it easier to find parts and bits and pieces. Um, there seems to be a big community of people who own these particular uh, pinball machines out there. Um, but a bit of a history about this machine. It was made in 1979. It was first manufactured on the 21st of September in 1979 when I was nine years old. And it was created by a, or designed by uh, a guy called Barry Alsler. The sound and programming was done by Paul Desault, and uh, the artwork was all done by uh, the uh, the Mitchells, Constantino and Constantino and Janine, um, and they did all the artwork. So, as I said, this machine uh, actually does sport um, a tiny bit of male nudity according to the trivia about this game that male nudity isn't really male nudity it's the vitruvian man by da vinci that's actually on the back glass so it does depict a penis on there so uh, you'll see that in some of the b-roll that i'm playing you right now um the it also uh does or did sport uh banana flippers which are quite interesting they sort of look like two bananas basically as your flippers um and i guess that was to act more like a slingshot to make the ball go faster um it's as a scoop rather than just hitting it with a paddle so they are a little difficult for me to find i did do a little bit of fishing last night and and yes certain parts are available quite easily but other parts of these things and there's three parts on each flipper that make up uh, the actual top part of the flipper that you see on the play field. One of those parts is very, very difficult to uh, to get. So I may even have to resort to manufacturing that myself, which I'm quite happy to do because then I'll stick some uh, up on uh, on uh, pin side and see if anybody's interested in buying uh, some of the run that I do of them. Um, so that'll be its own little video on the banana flippers. This video will be all about the assessment um, of the machine and see what actually needs to be done. So I'll be going through the play field, the cabinet, the back box. I'll be looking at the back glass, the paintwork on the outside of the machine, any woodwork damage that might need to be, uh, need to be fixed, whether it needs to be varnished like this one, this old machine here had a lot of paint damage and instead of repairing that and making it look like a brand new machine i opted for basically just um giving it a light sand and uh giving it like seven coats of, of polyurethane over the top thanks mr junglewood sounds like he's happy with that so um this actually is all really, really hardy and durable, but still looks old and, and uh, the patina of it is, has been preserved. So, and I do sort of like that. The paintwork I think on, uh, on the Time Warp is actually a lot better state than this was, uh, even though it's an older machine. So, uh, so that'll be good if, uh, if, if we can pretty much keep things as they are. I, I'll be opting to do that just to keep 
price down and and also to keep down the effort because um, obviously uh, there's a lot of effort that went into this and I don't really want to uh, put in as much effort as I put into this one because there was a few things I had to do a few times in order to get them right on this one because I had to fashion some parts inside um, because the only um, spares that were available for it were for a modern version of the machine and I had to adjust parts by uh, using grinders and all sorts of horrible things like that um, and I had to keep creating them until they worked and worked smoothly uh, which I eventually did in the end happy with that um, so this video will be pretty much looking at uh, assessing all of that seeing also what's missing and then uh, we'll get into it so let's go to it so, all right, so now I'm down on the floor with the time warp machine and this is pretty much how it arrived in my house when my mate Russell and I lifted it out of the car to put uh, somewhere and that ended up being in my living room next to my record collection um, so yeah this is really really filthy um, but uh, for the most part it actually is looking pretty good um, all the plastics and the bumpers and everything see, still seem to be together um, back when I was restoring the Jungle Lord, virtually every one of the plastics that were on the playfield were chipped or broken. And I had to figure out how to at least restore them to a state that they looked all right. And that meant, um, you know, fixing warps as well as gluing cracks and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, whereas most of these plastics look pretty good. They just look dirty to me. So I'm hoping that... Um, uh, they'll clean up really, really well. Um, the drop targets don't have any decals on them, um, so we'll source those. Um, the bumpers all in pretty good condition, however, um, they probably need parts. Um, looking at the stuff that I pulled out of the cabinet back when I was actually uh, packing it up in from the warehouse, there was a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of the coils and stuff removed out of this um, play field. So let's just uh, lift this lockdown bar off. And we're going to lift up this play field and have a look underneath. All right. So, look at this play field. Yeah, all the coils, pretty much bar a couple, have been removed. Um, there's a lot of broken wires here. That's obviously where the flippers were. Um, so, uh, but initially, it looks pretty clean, actually, under there, even though the top side's pretty filthy. This actually looks really clean. Just looking at the... Um, at this play field though, I know that I'm going to have to rebuild um, the drop target assemblies, which mostly looks missing right now. Um, and these drop targets are interesting because compared to the Jungle Lord ones, they, uh, it has um, circuit board on the backs of those. So I've never actually come across that yet. So now that I've got something new to uh, look at and figure out how it works, I always love that. So. Um, I'll look at um, what goes into that and whether anything needs to be replaced as far as the circuitry goes on that. Um, some of these uh, things like um, the initial, uh, the, the plungers and flippers um, and the, the things like the kick out, uh, kick out balls or the slingshot uh, assemblies will probably all need to be ripped out of there and just assessed and probably I'll, I'll replace a lot of parts um, that are there. Um, but on the whole, it looks pretty clean and tidy, um, barring the cut wires and things like that, which we have the schematics. So um, hopefully uh, not too many wires have been replaced, changing colors, that sort of thing because I did notice that with the Jungle Lord when I was restoring that, that certain people had in the past changed certain wire colors and I had to figure out 
but back in the loom it was one color and then by the time it made it to the other end it was actually uh, a different color um, that confused me to no end the actual box and the uh, the uh, woodwork is looking pretty good it's not looking like there's any major cracks the um, bar that this uh, lean bar actually connects to it's come away from the wall at one end um, but that's not too hard to basically fix and glue um, the speaker down there looks pretty good although the earth wire is not connected to it so there's a bit of wiring uh, that we need to figure out um, the flippers switches um, yeah they'll probably need replacing I'll, I'll just replace them because they're flippers they're, they're the things that probably people hit the most and also they have a, a bit of a, uh, a charge to them so you want them to be nice and responsive so I'll probably just opt for replacing those leaf switches down here and the buttons themselves um, as far as all, all the globes I'm going to replace with LED globes because uh, on the Jungle Lord that's what I did um, and it looks great however any of the lamps that I actually see um, on the Jungle Lord that I can actually see without actually uh, you know, it being covered by a plastic or, or part of the play field I've actually uh, opted to put original lamps back in because of the era of these machines when you see a, an LED lamp it just sort of takes you away from the era of it at all and the history um, so if you put what I did was I put normal lamps in the ones that I could see and it just lifted uh, the way it looks so much so the the lights that were covered by any sort of uh, lens or, or, or color you know um, insert all lit up really really nicely with the LEDs however the ones that I could just see straight through from uh, uh, from where I'm actually standing while playing it I opted for the brand uh, sort of just normal lamps uh, normal uh, standard illuminated lamps um, old school um, continuing on the some of the covers there for uh, the airing cover, covers for air intakes um, they need some addressing but that's looking pretty good back glass here um, there's a few problems with it there's a few issues where you can you can see through so generally it's where the blue is it looks like so so looking at um, this back glass yeah there's some cracking and stuff but on the whole it's actually looking pretty good I'm not even sure whether I would restore um, this or just keep it looking uh, era you know this era um, by having the cracking and the flaking um, it is the original back glass from this machine and you sometimes don't get the opportunity of having that on the jungle lord i didn't have it at all um so and still don't still waiting to find one from the jungle lord so i actually don't mind um it uh having this the only part that i would look at restoring is maybe this top blue here um is probably the major part that's missing and if I can find uh, in my Matisse, if I can mix up a blue just to do this one little section, um, I'll see how close I can get. So I might opt to do that. The good thing about doing that is that I can take it off if I don't like it pretty much. Um, so that's pretty good. Um, otherwise, I actually have spotted up online that I can get a brand new back glass for this. Um, from Marco and at the price of about 300 American um, so it's a bit of money and I've also got to take into account that I need to restore that uh, sorry send that all the way to from America to Australia so that might be a bit cost prohibitive um, all right on to the backboard so this backboard looks a bit faded at the top as far as paintwork goes, um, uh, it basically has uh, all of these shrouds, these light shrouds. Some of them are broken, some of them are missing, 
but I'm not really too concerned. Even if I can't even source these parts, I can easily 3D print them because um, I've got actual candidates to actually model from anyway. So don't really mind on that, although I don't think it's too hard to find these. Um, all of the globes uh, look blown to me because they all... They have um, a fairly dark... So they look a bit blown, but that's all right. We'll be replacing all these globes anyway. As you can see, all of the dis digital display panels are missing. Um, however, in the box here of bits, um, I've been given some candidates that might end up being uh, uh, working candidates for these to, uh, to actually be the um, uh, to be the displays although some of them are in a state of or a terrible state where you know all the contacts have been pretty much severed and things like that so we'll see what we can do with those I don't see that that would be too hard to restore I did get given a controller board for uh, for this one as well um, but I also found this in the bottom of the uh, backboard that there's one missing its display, but there's another one. Oh, sorry. See, that way. So, so at least I've got this as a spare, and also um, I can actually have a look at how it works. So anything that's always, anything's uh, good that's a spare, that you know will be a spare, um, is fine. But hopefully this one will work and that's all, all great. Um, the loom, uh, which I thought was missing when I first initially um, getting uh, Russell Brent around, uh, is actually here, so I was very happy when I saw that. Um, opening it up, uh, it's actually looking pretty decent inside. Now we're missing the soundboard, the driver board, the power supply, the transformer, and the capacitor, just from initially looking at it right now. So, yeah, there's a few things I probably need to buy in order to get this to a functioning state. There is, however, the MPU board. So the original MPU board, or master processor unit, basically the PC, um, the brains of the pinball machine, are actually there. Um, and I would love to not use an aftermarket board that emulates the outputs of a pinball machine. Um, I would prefer to actually use the original board. So I, need, I might actually go and uh, fish around and see if I can actually dig up the original System 6 boards and go down that track. But looking also at the actual um, wood, it's there's not any real swelling at the back here. Um, it's a bit of, let's have a close that up, turn to the side. So this, this artwork, although it looks a little worn, it's still a lot better than what I had with the Jungle Lord. So I'm actually pretty happy with that. I might just varnish over the top just to protect it. Um, a lot of purists out there um, say to me when I look at restoring things like this uh, or anything really that I should try and take it back to being looking like it just came off the assembly line and yeah if it was a vehicle or something I, I would understand doing that but when you're talking about restoring something that you want a piece of history in your house I don't know um, I guess it's personal taste my personal taste is I like seeing the age of the thing um, just by looking at it um, I'll probably, in, in saying that, I still will probably take, paint the top. I'll probably try and get as close to this blue as I can, which seems to be some sort of um, powder blue or, yeah, some sort of, um, some sort of shade of blue that's in that realm anyway. This does seem a little bit warped. I'm seeing a gap through the corner here. Um, there is no lock here in this hole, so I'll source one of those. Um, 
I still haven't spotted where the where the um, serial number is. So I wouldn't mind knowing where in the run of machines this came from, near the start or near the end. I don't know really why I like to know those things, I just do. Um, these are the legs. Um, don't know whether they're the original legs or not, but they are a set of decent looking legs um, and the feet need replacing. There's none in any of the other three, but um, this one's had it. So I will replace all of those. And even with these, I probably wouldn't even um, do much more than uh, running my little trick for removing surface rust using alpha, and that'll be another video, um, stay tuned for that one, to basically just clean up um, these uh, as much as I can, but I don't really mind them looking a little ratty because um, it sort of goes with this paintwork. So all good. Um, we have the original, the original leg bolts there too. So they might actually end up going on there, although uh, Russell did give me um, some brand new bolts as well. Um, if in case I really wanted to, you know, have nice brand new bolts. Um, back on the, on the uh, main cabinet over here, we have the head bolts there and those original bolts are still there. Um, other things that were in, uh, that were in the box were the apron looking a little ratty it's had a sticker there at one point um and no one's really i think it's may, may have fallen off because the residue is still there um this will clean up pretty nicely i reckon i've got to be careful because they some of the um some of the paints that they used when you when i've cleaned up just using normal cleanup materials sometimes this paint started to shift so you just be careful. Uh, I would just give this a wash with soapy water to see how it comes up and maybe even use some eucalyptus oil to try and take off the residue of this sticker. But it's um, pretty good. The original instruction card there is magic and it's fantastic. Um, it's double-sided. It's the, the original card that came with the machine. Um, it even has the, the insert card for uh, for basically any special boosters or, or anything that we you uh, if, that you programmed this thing to to do for this game, it's still there. So happy with that. Love those. Um, other things that I found in the box or inside the cabinet uh, were old old coils. Um, all of these coils are the same sort of colour. So I don't know what makes a coil go black, um, but I'll be replacing these anyway. I, I just don't see any reason why you would use old coils in a restoration if you want the, the game to play um, well. So the guts, I've got no problem with tearing out old bits and putting in new as long as it looks good at the end and plays well. Um, so, you know, some of these have got no way of shifting. They're seized as hell. Anyway, coin door. This is where the coins drop down. And if you hit re refund my money, the coin would pop into there. So all of those bits and pieces seem to be easy. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, on top of that, we have one of the boards that I said was missing before, which was the power supply board. Um, my mate Russell found me one, so he's he's kindly donated that as part of the deal, um, which is great. Oh, and I have the other card, which was for the other side of the shroud. That's that's just fantastic. I love that. This is just great. Anyway, so that's where we're at. Oh, and uh, one last thing that we've got, which is over here. Just excuse my head. We have the lockdown bar is fine and this is the hopper that collects all the cash so all of the money collects in this little uh, drawer it looks a bit rusty and stuff doesn't even really need to be fixed up who really cares well I, I actually do so I'll probably clean it up I'll probably even paint it um, just so that it's uh, nice when you open up the coin door that you can sort of see 
a nice uh, pretty hopper in there. So that is pretty much where we're at with this machine. So that's the current state of play where it comes to our restoration of the 1979 Williams pinball machine called Time War. So if you uh, like this video, like and subscribe. Next video is going to be all about ripping that play field out, putting it onto a rotisserie table and starting cleaner and pretty much listing down what I need to buy to put under that play field that's missing um, and what I need to do to rebuild things like those drop targets and stuff. Subsequent videos after that will be all about paintwork and putting things together, but I think this is going to come together relatively quickly and it's all going to depend on how fast parts arrive in through the mail. So here at PropMaker we make and restore things and this is a prime example of what we actually are trying to do with this channel is to make uh, restoring old things like this demystified so that you can look at this and go yeah I can do that so if you like this channel like and subscribe I'll see you next time where we rip out that play field put it onto a rotisserie and start cleaning it it's not going to be fun but yes it's going to be fun when it's going to be fun for you to watch anyway all right thanks for watching prop maker